This is your platform. This is the Low Cow Podcast, all right? This is Revenge of the Nerds, all right? You got Turkey Tom comes on this goddamn thing. These nerds write essays in school, right? And then they go on YouTube and do their little essays. In 1994, the YouTuber Boogie2988 got popular because he was fat and he landed in a pool. They're talentless. Very Wings, handy. you know what? You said, look here, listen. Boogie, you know what you did? You shot a fucking gun. And guess what? Both went viral. You you tell me a moment that Turkey Tom, that June the King, did in their fucking life that got millions and millions of you. Give me a moment that any of these nerd people have done that went viral. Nothing. You guys have changed the fucking culture. Guys, it's over. I'm actually nothing. The lolcow industrial complex is going really strong. Since the Boogie documentary, there's been like a renaissance of uh, lolcow content, and people just want to make videos talking in detail about the downfall of creators. There's a lolcow podcast, there's all these channels talking about the downtrodden and horrible lives that these guys have. The DSP clip channels are absolutely killing it. It's a beautiful time to watch someone fall into disrepair, to watch their life crumble. And one aspect of a lolcow that a lot of people like to talk about is their finances. Typically, it's hard to be a lolcow if you're really raking in the dough and doing super well. And one person whose finances have been speculated on a lot is Boogie. In the documentary, he famously said he spent $200,000 on hookers. Now, I think that number was greatly exaggerated by his own admission. I think the actual number is probably closer to $80,000, which is a lot to spend on ladies of the night, no doubt. That's like double what most people make in a year. So it's definitely still pretty goddamn foul, but it's not as bad as the $200,000 uh, amount that was initially said in that documentary. Well, recently, Boogie did this podcast on Caleb Hammer's channel to have his finances broken down in detail and talk about all of his dumb spending habits. And the title of this video is Absolute Savagery, okay? It's titled, Boogie2988 Will Die in Poverty. I can't say that I disagree, honestly, given everything. So one thing I found interesting is when they talk about the Tesla that Boogie bought, which he he got out of that, I guess, like a day later. He didn't really buy it. I mean, he did buy it. He, like, walked back the deal and said he didn't want to have it, actually. I really could use some help. Wasn't there the, oops, I just accidentally bought a $100,000 Tesla? Please was, give me that money? Was a, that was a bit. Like, I never bought a Tesla. I never, okay. yeah. You didn't get a Tesla? No, of course not. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I'm driving a Toyota hybrid Corolla that See, I bought used for 20K. Yeah, I saw the Toyota. I was like, did he get rid of his Tesla? Never had one. Never had one. So that's this internet rumor. This seems like a, a smart investment while I was in the showroom. And I got home and I put a $2,500 deposit down and I'm like crunching the numbers looking. Oh. I'll, I'll spend $50,000 today on a, a down payment. Yeah. I'll loan out the other 50. This is a stupid decision. It would have been aggressively stupid. I'm right. so glad you didn't yeah, do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I am so glad you didn't do that. That was one of the scariest things but that it, I thought I heard. But at that point, why not just play the character? Is right. it t at well, that point, just let the internet do what the internet's going to do, right? But once again, this is such a dumb idea, like, let the internet do what the internet's going to do. The internet does what it does because you put out that kind of information into the world and you allow them to make fun of you in that way. You give them ammunition. If Boogie had just never bought this Tesla, if he had never made this decision, if he had never done this, and he never would have been in this position in the first place where he'd be struggling to, like, figure out what he's going to do. And once again, like, there's this big, like, defeatist attitude that Boogie has and always has had, which is like, well, you know, the internet's going to do what they do, so why don't I just make a dumb decision anyway or let them think I made a dumb decision? When in reality, what you actually need to do is work to counter that narrative by bettering your life. It's not just about countering what the internet thinks. It's about countering, you know, your own preconceived notions of what you're going to do and changing your life around to be better um, in the face of adversity. And Boogie seems to be someone who doesn't do this. And throughout this entire interview, he's basically pushing off responsibility for things that he's done and what he needs to do during the entire thing. I didn't expect front page of Reddit. That was wild. And to this day, I think it's still fascinating that people think I bought that car. I can't believe I thought you, you thought car. I bought that I car. Thought you bought that he said he bought the car. That's why people think that. He made a video saying he got a Tesla. So obviously people thought that he bought the car. Like if I if I make a video saying uh, I'm going to run over a homeless person and there's no joke, there's no irony, right? Like I clearly want to do that. Then like why would people think any differently? Unless you make it clear that it's a joke and Boogie didn't do that at all. He made it seem like he was buying the Tesla. There's a video of this on his channel. And the worst part about it is, and anybody out there, like if you want to buy a luxury car, buy a luxury car. I don't... I don't think it's a smart decision. But if you're going to buy a luxury car, don't buy a Tesla. What's wrong with Tesla? I'm considering getting a Tesla. They're so expensive for repairs. If someone mm -hmm. dents that vehicle, it's so... They know it's a luxury car. But this is the case, once again, like the Tesla is not uniquely a luxury car. I, I bought an A4 in January. I bought it cash. It's an expensive car. When I have had to have repairs on it, like there are repairs. You just need to be in a position where you can actually pay for it. And Boogie was not in that position. But there are people who can buy a luxury car and they can afford it and they can, you know, afford the experience of owning it. And Boogie's just someone who 
can. Like it's not just a Tesla problem. Teslas do suck. I would say don't buy a Tesla for that reason. But like with any luxury car, if you're gonna buy a Tesla, if you're gonna buy a BMW, an Audi, if you're gonna buy a Mercedes, like it's an equally bad financial decision, I would say in almost every scenario. Maybe the Tesla is slightly worse, but um, regardless of that, and he also was buying a really expensive Tesla. I think it was like $100,000 Model S Plaid or something like that. If you're gonna buy that car, just be in a position where you can afford it. You know, this isn't a Tesla problem. This is a boogie making a dumb financial decision problem. They upcharge you every chance they get. This is every luxury dealership ever. When I get a tire replaced on my car, it's like $400. Like that's probably low too. Like obviously that's the case with a luxury car. If you wanna go the fastest possible speed, there's a fee to unlock that. It can do it. It's just a software <laughs> governor. They charge you to let it have the ludicrous speed. Like it's it's a money, it's a, one of the worst money things I think you can make. The idea of Boogie driving really fast is really funny to me. Something about him just like speeding down the highway going like 120 130 in a tesla is uh it's just kind of awesome i wish he had done that if not if only for the content but obviously it's for the best he decided to get out of that decision because uh he couldn't afford it you know well cars in fun. general i mean mm -hmm. unless it's like a beater that's getting you from a and b or just safety measures or room for family everything beyond that starts becoming a want that's why so luxury vehicles are okay if they're you know that's when i bought the newest car i've ever Ford. owned was this uh hybrid yeah and it had one previous owner uh and i bought it just before all the prices went crazy crazy so i got it Good. for 20 20 21 thousand uh i wanted to build credit so i put twelve thousand down i loaned out the rest you still all on it i think maybe a thousand or two thousand it's in the neighborhood of not very much okay i'm also confused as to why he bought a new corolla i mean a corolla is a good car undoubtedly it's not a bad car but there's just no reason to buy a new one he probably could have gotten one that's like five seven years old or you know ten thousand dollars less and it would have been just as good it would have been just as good on gas mileage but it seems like he really likes to have new things he likes to have like a shiny new thing even though it's a it's a Corolla. It's like, oh, well, I got to get the 2020 hybrid model because it's new. It's like, you just didn't need to buy that. You could just buy a normal, you know, or not normal, but you could just buy a slightly older car for, you know, $10,000, half the price. You could put five down instead of 12 down, have a little extra in savings. Car payment's probably lower. I don't know why he felt the need to buy a new one. Um, he justifies it by saying it's before prices went up too much, but it's like, just buy a cheaper car if you're in a money problem, you know? I mean, you could even get cheaper than 10. I know used cars are expensive right now. You could get a little cheaper than 10, realistically, though. Facebook, 76 bucks comes in a month again what are we doing there we're just posting some clips and just nothing's happening or oh uh no this is meta pc so this is a sponsor that i have <laughs> we get uh five percent all right <laughs> yeah we get five percent of uh the sales that we make in a month so some months it's low like this 76 bucks on a really good month it's maybe 300 okay cool yeah so let's keep going through the income mm -hmm. twitch again not for some reason i would have thought you were doing better on twitch and here's the thing it's because number one i don't stream as often as i like why um i get very anxious doing it uh, most of the bad things that I ever said, I said on Twitch, right? This is the worst thing. I get very anxious doing it. It's like, you just do it. Like, just get over your anxiety. You just have to do it. Every, uh, everything that Boogie could be doing to better his life, like, he just has some explanation to put off. Like, oh, well, I get anxious doing it. It's like, well, you know, don't you think normal people probably get anxious doing their normal jobs? Like, yeah, your job is streaming though. Your, your job is YouTube broadly, but your job is streaming. Like, you just have to deal with it. Be a man about it and <laughs> be a man and turn on the live stream and it sounds so silly but like it's such like an easy thing to do that you can make a bunch of money from if you're already doing 300 a month off of barely streaming you could be doing one or two thousand off of streaming you know a few times a week easily and he just chooses not to and there's no real good explanation you'll get in here for that other than well i get anxiety from it. that's because i have this to, to, trying to totally break character with you here i have this very andy kaufman-esque character also that and i'm an idiot and so i will either push the edge because i grew up on andy kaufman sam kennison richard pryor george carlin um andrew Drew Dice Clay. I love shock humor. I listen to shock humor still to this day. Mm -hmm. um, people didn't like it when you did it. No, then it is the, they like it coming from a shock jock or a shock comedian, not the person that some people branded as the Mr. Rogers of YouTube. Because some people branded, Boogie branded himself that way because he was obsessed with making himself look good and putting the best version of himself on YouTube, which is fine. It's fine to be a good person, but it's not good to lie. It's not good to have a persona too much, especially if you're going to let that facade break. And that's what Boogie did. He let the facade break. He let himself, you know, kind of be seen in one positive light on YouTube and then that's not the real him. So if he had just been consistent about that through all the way or if he had just like slowly sort of revealed who he was over time and branded it a little better, uh, been like a slow introduction, that could have been way better. But he decided not to do that. He decided not to do that for, for what reason? There's no good reason, truly. There is no good reason. You can't do that. Bob Saget did it, but I'm no Bob Saget, right? So why we do it then? Stupidity. Okay. I, I, it just, you know. But on top of that, this is the worst thing. He knows, he knows it's a problem and he refuses to change. He refuses to change. Uh, if you watch 
watch one of my live streams, I mention donations, subs, stuff like that, maybe once in a two hour stream. Because I've never, against the character I play, against the reputation I have, I don't like crowdsourcing. But you I, refuse to get a job. I don't like crowdsourcing, he says, as he, he, he begs for money. In the video he made where he said that he was broke, he begged for money. He said that you guys need to pay me, help me out with the t-shirts, anything helps. And like, that's okay. But like, then don't pretend that you're against it or you hate it because you, you truly don't, you know? You don't. None of these low cow guys hate begging. DSP is obsessed with begging. That's all he does. I've been streaming for four hours, guys, and there's not a lot of donos. Do I got to bring out the vest again? Come on. Um, by the way, I think that DSP interview I talked about is probably never happening. Just saying. Um, yeah, there you go. And you need money to survive. It's less of so refusing. So we have to do something. It's less of refusing more that I, I just don't know if I could. I do have good What does that even mean? I don't know if I, you obviously could. You know that you could. You just said you could. It is refusing. It's refusing to do the work that you need to do to make money and, and exist. Just turn on the computer. Do anything. Do something. Do anything. I mean, I think this guy probably works like two or three hours a day. Maybe. Maybe. And it's certainly not every day. Imagine the money he could make if he was actually on his grind. He doesn't have to work 12 hour days. Work seven, eight hours a day. Normal work hours. Normal person. When your friends are at work, you work and then you get off. It's not that tough. It's not that. You're, you're a 50 year old man. You should be able to put yourself through uh, normal work hours. Like this is a bare minimum. This isn't even a, this isn't even an accomplishment. This is something everybody does. Everybody in the normal life just works. And it's like, it's not something to be super patted on the back about. It's just like, oh, you did the normal thing. Bare minimum that you're supposed to do to survive. And you, you, you just won't do that. And that's why you're in this scenario. You would rather spend your time coming on podcasts, trying to get people to feel bad for you rather than doing what you need to do. Yeah. Well, you're not going to have 4 million subscribers for long, so you can get a job now. <laughs> Sorry, buds. I mean, that's not something I would actually ever say, you know. Uh, merch. People aren't really buying your merch. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know. I'd, I'd take 20 bucks for a month, you know, for selling the I get the it as well, but when, when I start seeing people on this show, especially business people, who are just so scattered in different pots, and Little's coming in, Little's coming in here, so mm -hmm. it's not adding up to much instead of, again, this is what I was going to start bringing up with Twitch. Like, you say, oh, I'm not really on there much, and, you know, things have been consequence and I'm, uh, consequences from what right. I've said, and then I'm feeling anxious about it, then I'm just like, okay, we're done with Twitch. I'm done with Twitch. Who even gives Focus all in what we know can be the revenue builder all time. Which continues to be YouTube ad. Sales. Yes, it does. This is absolutely right. the biggest absolutely. number that we have seen here so far. Now, uh, would I be able to, they're not going to be able to see it, but would I be able to see the studio app? Yeah, sure, sure. sure. Yeah. There's a couple things show. I'm curious yeah, yeah, about. Right. Private for my eyes only, not for you. Okay, so what I'm mostly curious about, I want to go lifetime. So, dude, okay, this is what the revenue looks like. YouTube revenue starts, right? Because, mm -hmm. you know, obviously, first of all, when YouTube started, it's just, I mean, the first three years, the first three years I started on YouTube, there was no partner exactly. program. Partner program didn't exist. So we go like, and then just trickle, 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 to where we are today is what your graph looks like. That that scares me. Yeah, I had like two good years. If if you look at the seventeen year history, I had like two really good years. You've made one point three million dollars. Incredible. In seventeen years, and which comes out to what a per year? I know, but that's still are you a math guy? Well, not a public math guy. What did I say? One point three. Yeah, over seventeen. Seventeen was when you started earning, or. 15 would have been when I started earning. Um, yeah, 80, $86,000 a year. Well, I mean, you're above the median I mean, household well, income. I'd be s out of uh, disability, which is what I was on when I started the YouTube channel, Yeah, absolutely. Right? But this, managing money correctly. I mean, $86,000 a year is... I mean, that's literally money that people in the hood kill each other over. They, I mean, they kill each other over like $2,000, but 86000 a year, that's a very good livable income. That's a very good income that most people could... Okay, I don't know about most people, but anyone who has a like basic grasp on finances, they do the math, it's like, okay, uh, I I know how to manage this money properly. 86,000 is enough that if you make that over 30 years, um, you can make enough that you can have a good amount of money in the bank saved up. Um, I mean, if you're saving, you know, each year, let's say 20 or even 30 of that, you're going to be in a really good position in just 10, 20 years. I mean, you're just going to have a bunch of money stacked up that you can, you know, rely on. If you get in a car accident, you need to pay for something. If you have some big expense that comes up, you can easily deal with that. It's not insane money, but like it's, it's certainly more than enough, more than enough. I mean, kids coming out of college are not making that kind of money. Some people who are 30 years old are not making that kind of money, you know? I mean, $86,000 is a very, very livable wage. You can live comfortably even on that. And for some reason, uh, Boogie seems to be downplaying that. He's like, well, then it would have been off disability. And it's like, well, I, I guess, but like, isn't that overall a good thing if you're working, making enough that you don't have to be on disability to rely on that? Like you're making your own money at the very least, you know? That doesn't seem to be a bad thing in my eyes that you're off disability. That should be uh, a championed, heralded thing in your life, I feel like. Spending a lot of it on prostitution would equate to us having at least a little bit of money now. Well, again, to address that important part of the doc, yeah. uh, number one, those numbers were rounded up. Mike admitted that those numbers are, 
are, are rounded up and adjusted. Uh, secondly, the majority of that money was spent traveling. And yeah. I went to the Game Awards. I went to Disney. I went. It was still a huge waste of money. But I think yeah. I think if we're dropping character and I think if we're being genuine here, I try to get a travel channel off the ground and try to do what my friend Jacob the Carpetbagger and Adam the Woo do. And I thought people would watch me go to Disneyland, right? I'm a big, fat, weird guy trying to, to do this, do that. Turns out they did not want to watch me do that. So if you contributed of the, you know, 80 whatever that you're making on a monthly basis, mm -hmm. uh, 20% on a monthly basis, which is like just very basic recommended, mm -hmm. uh, contributing to just the standard stock market, 8% return, uh, you know, being a little more conservative there from beginning to end, you know, up years, down years, all combined 8%. Sure. Over the course of the uh, 15 years, $17,000 a year would equate to almost half a million dollars now. Now, obviously, we continue and just let that continue to compound and hopefully throwing more things in there, mm -hmm. we could have gotten you to a point where, you know, mid-60s retirement. What scares me now? It's brutal how simple that would have been to do. 86000 a year, and you multiply that by 0.2, you've got $17,200 a year. Uh, that's easily money he could have done without, you know? 17 grand, like he didn't need that 17 grand. He could have lived and just been been just fine. And the majority of his videos that people watched and were interested in anyway were like no expense, basically. I mean, I guess he bought his computer, but apart from that, I mean, he just sits in his room and records stuff, and that's it, you know, just talking about things, like kind of like what I do. That's $70,000 that could have easily just been tucked away. And instead, for whatever reason, he didn't do that. Um, I think it's just his own stupidity and hubris and thinking it would never end, honestly. This is the thing with a lot of YouTubers and financial literacy. I think maybe they don't have good people around them telling them what to do. Maybe it's just an ego thing. Um, but you you can't operate on YouTube under the assumption. I mean, in anything, you can't operate under the assumption that it's going to last forever. But especially on YouTube, you know, things are a little more volatile. Um, there's no degree for YouTube. Um, so there's no, like, kind of guarantee of a job. If you have a doctorate in, I don't know, gynecology or something like that, I don't let's say something random, um, and you're, you know, a skilled person in that way, you're probably going to be able to get a job regardless of whatever. For YouTube, there's no degree. You, you, you know, you may may as well be worthless um, one way or another uh, in, in a lot of cases, especially Boogies, because he's not someone who knows particularly a lot about digital marketing or content creation or production or writing or editing. He survived off the fact that he was him. And it was a, per a personality thing, which in some ways is more valuable than any of his other skills, but it's only valuable if people like you and people don't like Boogie anymore. And so when you're in a position like him, you can't assume that you're going to make money forever uh, and you can't assume you're going to make the kind of money you're making forever. So you need to be doing things to put that money away and mitigate, you know, risk for if YouTube doesn't work out so you can survive. And he was not when he was doing that. He wasn't a very forward-thinking person. Uh, and as a result, he's I mean, he's currently broke now. Horrendously, horribly broke. I mean, he's got a few thousand dollars in savings. I think he has like seven, eight grand in savings. Um, but that's it. And all the other money, it went away entirely uh, of his own fault, you know? And these little these little things that come up, uh, like medical expenses or stuff like that, I mean, big, big problems, obviously, but they would have been much easier to handle uh, if he had just saved smart, you know? And, and if he would continue to make money and be on his grind set, so to speak. And once again, this wouldn't have had to be 14-hour days, you know? Boogie's not that kind of person, I understand. Normal work hours would have sufficed to get this kind of stuff done. You know, make a video a day that could take two or three hours, and that's for the main channel. Maybe you make like a second channel video a day or something like that. That's two or three hours, and then you know, four or five hour stream. That's a pretty solid work day. You still have time to hang out with your family, your twenty year old girlfriend or whatever. You guys can still hang out, do whatever you do. You know, you can dress up like Jabba the Hutt in the bedroom and get your freak on. You still have time for that, uh, but he just wasn't doing that. You know, he just he let himself fall into irrelevancy. It's uh, it's pretty it's pretty sad. The thing with YouTube that's most important in my mind is consistency. I think consistency is most important above all else. It depends on the field you're in, but obviously for someone like Boogie, uh, when you're building your brand, building an audience, and you want an active viewer base, just being consistent with the amount of content you're putting out is the most important thing, and uh, consistently working on it. You know, five days a week, eight hour days could have totally saved Boogie's reputation. If not his reputation, it could have saved his career and helped him, you know, just continue making content the way he was. But he didn't do that. He didn't do that. He got lazy. He got complacent. And uh, now that's, that's why he's in the position he's in right now. I want everyone to understand. Uh, you know, I do I, I, I do feel bad for Boogie. I do, after getting to know him a little bit, I do feel bad for him, but I shouldn't. I shouldn't feel bad for him. Ultimately, it's his fault that he's in the position he's in. It's completely his fault. And even now, he could be in a much better position as we'll, we'll see in this video, and he, he chooses not to because of his own dumb decisions. I'm not going to talk about the age thing, like, whatever. This is this is financial. Well, look, man, I'm not making it to mid-60s. Let's, no, no. let's just be honest. Oh, well, that's what I want to talk about. I know a lot of people want to, okay. This is financial audit, not dating audit. So, she's going to live longer than you. Sure. You guys might get married, maybe. Sure, probably. What do we do when you're no longer here and you've left nothing to a widow? A widow who has no education, no skills, isn't like a YouTuber or anything. I mean, she's basically just going to do OnlyFans probably if he dies, right? Like, that's pretty much the only option to make money. And he's not, you know, he's not going to leave her with shit.
he's not. Um, so that's a very dark reality for her. Uh, you know, once again, I'm not relationship police, but if she's, you know, placing her bets, I would say she's probably not doing the smartest thing for her future at all. But I guess, I guess she loves him, you know? If, and if you love someone, you should do anything for them and ruin your life for it. Yeah. When I met her, without getting into her personal history too much, because it's not necessarily the place for it, yep. but when I met her, she was struggling with severe social anxiety. Mm -hmm. She was struggling with um, she's getting her life together. Uh, when I met her... Is it together now? I, I was talking to my friend Michael, kid behind the camera, and his plan was just be the person you needed when you were in that position. Because that's who I was when I was her age. When I was 20 years old, just like her, um, I couldn't function in the world. I played EverQuest and World of Warcraft and did uh, built terrible websites and made a... a, a, a a, bare, a barely passable income. What does this have to do with you leaving or anything? Well, uh, hold on, I'm getting to that. Okay. This is the thing that is a struggle with talking to Boogie. It's it's constant tangents. You, it's hard to get the actual information out of him. It's a, it's a he's a big storyteller. Yeah, and a good one of that. But to still leave her better off than she. It's was. kind of difficult to deal with. Oh, that's your plan to leave her better off. Okay. Right? Well, like get her sure. out into the world, get her the experience she needs, get her working if she when she's ready. But if we're get responsible her her with money, you actually leave ready. her a nest egg instead of just you know putting right. life. I'm just now. saying. I'm just saying right now that's a conversation her and i have had and like like that's a very real possibility i mean also to be honest as long as she's with boogie she's going to be dependent on him to my knowledge she's not working right now she's going to be dependent on him for everything and that's probably not good that's probably not a good thing um it's it's hard to uh, find your own personal growth if you're dependent on someone else emotionally, financially, etc. Especially when that person is a uh, boogie who does not have those things sorted out himself. So I don't know how he thinks he's going to help her, really. I, I don't think he is, actually. Because she's not in it for the money, right? She's no. in it for the life experience. She's in it for the love. She's the in life it for experience. the companionship. She's in it to become a better and This is so dark. A partnership <laughs> caring about the other partner. You want to, instead of putting now, now with instant gratification, right. we want to leave Well, that's something. why I'm here, yeah. right? That's why I'm sitting down with you today. No, absolutely. Because I'm hoping you can help me create a financial plan that can. That's why I don't call it out immediately. Direction. So you don't do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, so you have a mortgage. Have now, a mortgage. this is your biggest equity position. Uh, what do we think the house is worth today? Zillow tells me 480. Um, mm. One of the houses in the neighborhood just sold for a little over five million. It's the same size, or sorry, uh, half a million, five hundred thousand. Okay. <laughs> um, and it's it's the same size as mine. It's literally across the street, and it just sold. Okay. So I think there's a very real chance that I'd need to put maybe twenty thousand of work into it. We need new carpets. We need paint, um, yeah. stuff like that. There's hole in the ceiling and and some, you know, Did you Francis almost lose YouTube this? damage. Do what? Did you almost lose this house at one point? No, never. No. Okay. Yeah. That's always, I will bend over backwards to make sure that mortgage gets paid. Yeah. Uh, if I have to sell everything I own, if I have to, and I have, we've, we've made some concessions that I'm not entirely comfortable sharing um, because the people involved are private people. Sure. But I did move a roommate in. He's been helping a little bit here and there. Mm. Um, I had a roommate over the last 25 years. He's finally been able to kick in a little bit as well. So we are finding ways to... So there's two roommates. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what was the purchase price of this house? The original purchase price, 275 And then I refinanced in 2018 because of my divorce. So the loan in 2018 became 200000 because I put more money down because I had money to, to put down. So I got it down to 207 I mean, we're at 4.3%. What are we going to refinance? You're going to get like hit to 8% if you refinance. Well, uh, the plan would be to try to bring the initial monthly payment down. But I really don't want to have to ever do that. Um, because we're five years into a 15 year. So we paid so much principal off. Wow, you did 15 year. Yeah, I was making good money at the time. So why not do 15 years? But now we're from 2018 to now, we're five years into a 15 year. Now, mm -hmm. I'm no math wizard and you are the math wizard, but that means I paid a good amount of principal off, right? I'm earning a very solid amount of equity by staying in that house, right? Well, you definitely pay more interest up front. But yes, five year into 15 year, you're definitely starting to see more benefit. Right. Absolutely. Well, I love the rate though. Yeah, the rate, you couldn't get a better rate, right? We would like... With my, but like with my credit, I could not have gotten a better oh, rate for at, the sure. time, at the time. Uh, but I mean, the reality of it is moving out of that house and trying to stay in Northwest Arkansas near my medical professionals where I need to stay. You have to stay. Yeah, it's it's a very stupid idea. Um, there is very little in the area. I might be able to get an apartment for $900 a month. Um, I might be able to get a duplex for $1,300 a month. But paying $2,100 in and then having some of that being brought in by roommates, I'm paying as much to live in this house and build equity mm -hmm. as I would be giving it all to a landlord instead. If anything, I, of course, I don't have the full financial history of like the last few years, mm -hmm. but if 
anything that I know just from just internet, mm -hmm. this was the good choice. Oh, yeah. This is the smartest choice ever. This was the good choice. Yeah. And 30-year uh, fix uh, or 15-year fix. I mean, thankfully, there's that one positive choice amidst a sea of trash. But, I mean, struggling to pay a $2,100 mortgage payment is not a position you want to be in. I don't think that Boogie's making that much more than like three or four grand a month, maybe. Um, so, I, I mean, at this point, he's like not putting anything away in savings, unfortunately, which is uh, which is a sad situation to be in. But once again, he, he got himself here. And so, um, you know, as much as it, you know, you want to feel bad for a 50 year old fat guy who ruined his life. Well, ultimately, he ruined his life and he and he knows that. But uh, as we'll get into here, there's a lot of uh, unfortunate uh, decisions he also made and is continuing to make about about how he spends money. And it's very unfortunate. There's different philosophies on that. I personally go 30 year because I just feel like I can uh, just make a better return on investment, putting the rest of the money somewhere else. But either way, I'm totally OK with this. To limiting risk, knowing your position and knowing that the YouTube career can be, you know, a quick woo. Mm -hmm. I would have like, okay, we made one point whatever, one point three million, and we owed a total of two hundred eight thousand. I wish we could have just taken care of this and lowered your risk profile yeah, yeah. over that time instead of, course, of yeah. instead of doing the traveling and stuff like that. Where of all course. my money's been going, I pay a little extra towards this on a monthly basis. But where my money's mostly been going is to into cash flowing uh, properties that then pay for this if YouTube goes away completely. Yeah. So yeah. that's that's. I wish we were risk mitigating. Right. And this, what he just described, is basically saying like he has other properties. He's renting them out to people, basically, from what I understand, that then pay for his mortgage, uh, which is good because that means that no matter what, if Caleb Hammer, you know, we'll see his YouTube channel. So he's got eight hundred thousand subs. He's doing quite a few podcasts. Okay, here's his channel. He's doing well, twenty four million views in the last thirty days. That's quite a bit. I mean, this guy could be making uh, one hundred and twenty thousand dollars a month, honestly, or even way more. He could be doing as high as one fifty a month. Um, off of this. Obviously, that's really good income and he's probably putting a lot of that away, I would imagine. And the fact that he put that towards houses is also very smart. And if he's doing financial auditing, he might even have a job outside of this, I'm not sure. But the fact that he has other properties as well just basically means that he's going to be able to pay for himself indefinitely, even if YouTube somehow doesn't work out, you know, this entertainment thing, which is very smart. And I think that's what a lot of YouTubers should be doing. They should be thinking about how to exit. What's their exit strategy for YouTube? How do they get out of this situation? And uh, I mean, Caleb is someone who, you know, he seems very forward thinking, so I'm sure he's going to be fine. But uh, for any, any YouTube, this guy's advice seems to be pretty good or just any person in general if you want financial advice just like you know learn how to put your money away learn how to um, manage it learn how to best save it um, learn how to grow it into something else rather than just letting it sit in a savings account um, and that's going to be your best bet as far as you know having an exit plan you know Andrew Tate talks about the matrix find a way to escape the average nine to five if you have a bunch of money coming in and you're like whoa this is a lot of money figure out a way to put that towards something that's going to you know benefit you long term rather than just thinking about right now chances are what you're doing right now is not going to last forever nothing lasts forever even if you don't fall off completely you might have a dull period in youtube so just you know figure it out and you'll be fine be smart be smart think long term life is a long game and you need to play it that way truly you do um, I, I we should we either on the last payment or like the last two or three i think okay we I'd might, have to look we it might up for take sure. a look into yeah. it uh and the personal loan has about a thousand right something like that that sounds right yeah there is another small loan what? Uh, there's a third one that you're seeing here. Credit card? Uh, no, it's a bed. I am, it's a what? I had to get an adjustable bed for my back and leg issues, and my doctor insisted that I looked into getting one. I looked into getting one, so I took out, uh, paid like a 500, 600 down, and then took out like a $2,500 loan. 20. Yeah. When'd you get it? July. Interest rate? Mm, 6%, I think mm. that's correct. What's the monthly payment? I think it's the one twelve you're looking at. Oh, so that was yeah, the that's secret. the one twelve. Yeah, secret is usually a store finance. Yeah. Okay. Uh, credit card. I want to take a look at in a second. Could you pull up your credit card app for me, sure. please? Yeah. I only own like nine hundred dollars on it, and it's uh, yeah. it's just a utility card for the business. So it gets used and it gets paid off. It gets used and gets paid off. What is he Do spending money on for his business uh, over the last couple of months? Yes, because it's been. What is it? Is it like storage? Like I mean, Google Drive's. I think it's like twenty dollars a month or something for the one terabyte or something. So I'm curious what his business expenses are monthly. Better than I would have liked. But I plan to pay it off with this check on the 20th, so. But it's only, mm, okay. It just scares me because it's only getting thinner except for that spike. Yeah. Well, that spike's going to pay off the, yeah, there's the okay. the credit card and the balance of like 950 bucks. I hate yeah, the lead credit up, line yes. available, $31.12. Yeah. Kill me. Okay. <laughs> uh, Wait. Again, I am he only has a, a $1,000 so line in his credit card. Stuff, so I will pay off a little Shouldn't bit. He have like, I guess his credit is probably horrible. But. Um, because eventually I will have to sell that house and I'll have to move somewhere when I do. Right? Why will you have to sell the house? A $2,100 mortgage payment is really hard. So you're saying you're not going to be able to afford the payment? I don't know. I, I'm hoping. I'm hoping that I will. But again, I'm always planning for the possibility that I won't. Right? <laughs> Late payment fee, October 31st. Late payment fee. Yeah. $25 late. Late payment fee, December 1st. This just happened.
end. Yep. Oh, f me. October was a very lean month. <laughs> oh, and you have a brand new iPhone. Dude, this phone was free. Really? Yeah, Verizon traded us an iPhone 7 for that. Mm, very Thank important you, business <laughs> purpose, uh, Chick-fil-A. Lucky it was all the way back Dude, you eat. Don't you eat? I eat. People eat. And this is the most annoying thing. It's like, dude, you eat. And it's like, okay, but you're buying, like, fast food, which these days is not cheap. Like, if you guys look at, like, the McDonald's prices these days, like, it's not that much less expensive than, like, a restaurant. It's, like, expensive for, like, a Big Mac meal with fries. Um, and Chick-fil-A is, like, probably something you would call, like, premium fast food. And so it's even more expensive than McDonald's. And it's like, well, you eat. Well, yes, but you could eat something else if you're having money struggles. You don't need to be eating out. I broke this down in a video I did recently about fat phobia and how cheap it actually is to eat. Okay, not how cheap it is to eat, but relative to fast food or eating out, it is way cheaper to just like buy things at Walmart. In this interview, you can hear Boogie's explanations for this are complete bullshit. It's infuriating to listen to beyond any any reasonable measure. Not I definitely out. eat. I eat a lot. Nah, you don't have to eat out if we can't afford to Dude, live. Dude, I with can't cook for I can't cook for three people for cheaper than twelve dollars. Uh, you might be able to actually. You might, and also like you're not paying twelve dollars a Chick Fil A here. You're paying for twelve dollars for one person, and it's twelve dollars for three people in this case, which is going to be like thirty six dollars. Uh, and if you're getting drinks, I mean, that can get up to like 45 when obviously, I mean, $45 can get you through, I mean, multiple days for three people. If you just, you know, spend it wisely on like pasta, rice, eggs, buying frozen meat in bulk or something like that, buying frozen vegetables. I mean, you can do a lot with that amount of money. Um, and so this is a, uh, this, I mean, this is completely untrue what he's saying here. I can't oh. cook for three people for cheaper than $12. Wait a second. Let me get my little handy dandy. Cook. First of all, that was three people. You did not feed three people on $12. Chicken sandwiches is five bucks. So you just got three chicken sandwiches eating That's generally fries, what you, get, you got yeah. nothing. You feed three people. I mean, even that, it's, it's 15. Five bucks in a hurry. Deal. The chicken sandwiches, the chicken patties, uh, we have HB. This guy knows. This guy knows. I don't know what your version is, but you sure. can get the frozen chicken patties, put them in the oven, and I promise... They are individually less than five dollars. More of an initial we have Walmart, investment. And they are not good chicken patties, dude. Can you be complaining about good chicken patties, really, in your position? Like, just eat something. It's food. Like, food, like if you need food, just get cheap food. Like, you don't need to be fine dining. You're not Grant Cardone. Do you need to be eating something nice every night? Do you really deserve that when you're impoverished to the degree you are and you barely work? Like, just get the cheap option. They're fine. They're they're absolutely fine. And that is quicker, okay. So it's more convenient taste. taste. There we and go. On top of that, so now there's more reasons. It's a four Affordable, right? You we eat out two or three days a week. It adds that's up. That's not affordable at all. To fifteen dollars a week. Yeah, fifteen, thirty, forty-five but, bucks. But it you adds can't up afford to, to pay the card. Well, I yeah, that's true. Late payment. That's it's true. not affordable if we can't pay the card. Do I look like the kind of person that's ever made sound decisions about food? No, but you could. He's telling you to. If you're asking this guy for financial advice, like I mean, you're literally going on a show. You said to ask him how. Like just change, change what you do. No, but that's why <laughs> I'm trying to. But that's why is, I'm trying to get this, it across. But this is my weakness. This is always going to be my biggest weakness. No, yeah. no, no, no. You you just you just allowed yourself infinite excuses for the future oh, and try to take responsibility. That's, that's actually true, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. why not like actually take responsibility and say, hey, we cannot afford to live right now. We don't get to afford to go out and but get so that traveling guess what we had for breakfast today what did you have for breakfast today chick-fil-a i like how he says it like he's eager to tell him that he made something like a dumb decision he's like oh we're traveling we ate chick-fil-a today it's like oh that's not good but he i think he's eager to hear like how this guy responds and shits on him honestly i think he is you have his free nuggets what about the continental breakfast at the hotel <laughs> free that's true actually yeah yeah it's generally just bowl of cereal yes and things. that's food that goes in your stomach for free for free you can't afford to this <laughs> boogie i mean that's true that's true if there's anything i can get across in this episode for you to just walk away with buddy if we cannot afford to pay something if we can't even afford to pay off the credit card we're getting late fees and we're just getting i mean i have can't a, I, go out to eat. I have a food budget of about 300 dollars a month the, and then we use that groceries it includes groceries most of the time yeah for we do eat we do eat groceries at home we have like uh, some of the inexpensive meals we make we make tacos and make shrimp pasta uh, that's good if i'm really feeling when well, you just do that every day instead of eating home, out we eat at home the majority of the good. time yeah Unfortunately, we just can't afford to probably go out at all. Right yeah, now. I'm, yeah, I'm really sorry. It sucks. I mean, it's true. Yeah, but it would have been more expensive to drive back to Fayetteville and and make a taco than it would have been to go to Chick Fil A today. But you're right. We could have eaten cereal at the buffet. Yes, I, yeah, was, that's about true. To, I was about to flip the. F Kill me. <laughs> okay. Continental breakfast isn't even bad, by the way, at a hotel. Like, I mean, sometimes it's just cereal, but a lot of the time they will have, like, eggs or something like that. They'll have, like, toast or something. They'll have bacon. Like, every Marriott has this. If you're staying at, like, a Best Western, it's probably not as good. But, I mean, they have something to eat. They have a 
muffin. Just eat that. It's like, well, it's not a good breakfast. Well, you're poor, so you don't get the good breakfast. You get the good breakfast when you have money to spend on it. Obviously, we have the late fees, but the mobile apps love to try to hide how much interest is. I mean, I I just pay the the, the minimum balance every month, and and the minimum yeah. fee is generally. So that's bucks. what you meant by paying it every month? The minimum balance. Not Sometimes the I pay off more. Yeah, for sure. Oh. F Okay, well, that's really bad. If we hold a card that's accruing interest, then we can't afford to go out to eat once. We just can't. That's true. Yeah. Because interest well, this is, is this will this will get paid us. off on the twentieth. This huge um, all of it, all of it. Yeah, the whole thing. Huge. Yeah, yeah. From the, what? From the spike that came in AdSense from oh, like the yeah. six thousand dollars. That's okay. I'm like seven eight hundred is what we made in uh, November, which was really awesome. I, I, I hope we can maintain that. But is this a debt? The preferred club? That's the house loan, right? Yeah, yeah. It's my current checking balance. So that's what that scares me. Yeah. Anything less than a thought? You, okay. Exxon fair came down here. McDonald's less fair. Yeah. Chick fil A. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait till you get to the Starbucks. Eight out twice. Then you're gonna get real mad. I'm not one of those people that freaks out about Starbucks. Five dollars, five dollars every couple of days. I love me a pink drink. I love me a. a oh know. well, I'll freak out about that because you can't afford it. Yeah. Well, uh, like, I'm not one of those people that when people can afford it, I, I don't yeah, freak yeah, out yeah. as long as you're hitting investing goals that are necessary to survive. Sure. Cameo, I'm glad that came in. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So that's a little extra. Yeah. Yeah, 100 bucks. You can book me at cameo.com. StreamYard, we're paying for it. Yeah. Barely made it back. Yeah, it's necessary for the podcast, though, so we're, we film there. Uh, oh, Look out podcast. Fair. Can't. Can't hate against no utilities. Same with gas. Walmart, you can never really tell what's being purchased from so Walmart. So most of my Walmart purchases tend to be Mets. For to live, like Mint Mobile. I don't even know what that is. Ryan Reynolds, Mint Mobile? I don't watch commercials, man. Okay, well, check it out, dude. I'll, I'll text you a link. You can be, it can be like 30 bucks a line. Okay, that, well, I mean, I'll still have to pay off this phone before I get there, but yes. Oh, oh, so the, I, wait. Yeah, you like told I me said, that phone was zeroed out. It, 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 it added up to like there was a balance of $420 spread across 24 months. Oh, <laughs> but it's zero percent interest. Seeing this guy's like head, just like face palms, is so epic for this entire thing. I don't want to clip champ this entire podcast. It is a good podcast from Caleb Hammer. If you guys want to check it out, ultimately, will Boogie ever change his lifestyle and his spending habits and actually live a better life? Um, if history shows anything, probably not. But you know, never say never. Maybe he'll turn around. But hopefully, this serves as a good example for all of you guys as for what not to do. If you guys want some decent financial advice, I would say check out this guy's channel. He has a lot of good stuff, and it's pretty entertaining as well because you get to watch YouTubers like this guy uh, or like female Instagram thoughts or whatever have their finances broken down by. Caleb and uh, you get to see basically how dumb they are with their money and like what not to do. If you guys like this video, be sure to leave a like. If you dislike it, leave a dislike. Drop a comment down below with your thoughts. Always good to hear what you guys have to say and check out my new channel, Tom IRL. We're going to be posting a lot of content there soon uh, so you guys can see me in real life in the flesh doing things out and about with uh, the, the cretins and hooligans of this world of Gen Z. See you guys all tomorrow. 07 soldiers. Bye. Tom Dark, really the type of guy to make another video about Boogie. Wait till the next 10. And be sure to become a member. For $5 a month, they get the members-only podcasts and exclusive videos that only members get. Thanks so much for your support. No